Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamonds trip young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. We got a whole lot going on today. We got a packed studio for you guys. A whole lot of surprises. And uh, as, as Statman likes to say, we also got the, the, the Real Fans, Real Talk, Alec Baldwin with us today as well. I was well. waiting to say that, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole lot going on. Balling for Pieces coming up, so we, we about to start rocking and rolling. And uh, we also have the, the cast and the crew of And There Were Four. Y'all know when we had my son on uh, a couple of weeks ago, he spoke about being in the movie. So it was only right that we brought the, the rest of the cast and the crew out to talk to you guys. So with that being said, let me introduce my co-host, Mark the Statman Skevich. What's going on, man? What's going on? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. A lot going on in the world of sports. World Series pushed it to Game 7. Knicks beat the Cavs. Cavs on a four-game losing streak. A lot to talk about today in sports. As Trip Young mentioned, we have the Alec Baldwin of uh, Real Fans Real Talk, frequent guest, and Bowling for Peace is this Tuesday. We have two tickets for you guys out there. Tweet to us at Real Fan Talk. Post tag us in a photo on Instagram. Put a video out there. Tell us that you want to go to Bowling for Peace a Bowling Edition this Tuesday, and we have two tickets for you guys. Uh, but Haran. Tell us about bowling for bowling for peace, um, or bowling for peace bowling edition yes, this yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, so um, man, it's gonna be phenomenal. I put the uh, I put kind of the same energy with this one that I've been doing for the uh, for the basketball games previously. You know, as you know, the first two years we had it where it was uh, more of a private thing. We had it at uh, Chelsea Pairs, Bowmore Lanes in Chelsea. And um, it was a real good turnout, but I kind of opened this one up more to the public, and um, it's it's been it's been real. The response has been really really dope. Uh, Brooklyn's already sold out. Um, New Jersey, we added New Jersey into it. Uh, the sixth borough, I also added Long Island into it as well. Um, but yeah, Jersey sold out. Brooklyn sold out, and um, it's gonna be really dope, man. Like I'm really excited about this one. Um, you know, so yeah, that's been. And of course, uh, Legend in Two Games over here. This is going to be your first uh, Bowling for Peace bowling event. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I've seen the footage from previous events, so I'm, I'm excited to get out there and check it out, man. You know. You're going to throw me on Team Staten Island, even though I'm not I'm <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn gets sold out, so you just yeah, cast us away on other teams. Well, it's all right, yeah. though. You did a good job with Staten Island last year. Actually, man. you you did, though. You, you, you kind of did, did you hold it down. down. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so. can't, can't complain. They needed, some, they needed some ringers, so, you know, they called the stat man up, and he did what he had to do out there. Yeah. But um, we're, we're definitely looking forward to it. You know, we say this all the time, but, you know, we're, we're very big. Um, with our charity events, and I think we, we might be on 10 this year. This might be the 10th one. So, you know, anytime Haran is doing something, we're always uh, supporting him, giving him that extra push. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, we just, he's working with the youth every day. Y'all on his Instagram, you see he's always with the kids, mm -hmm. teaching them basketball drills and all that. Just don't be teaching them how to chuck it up like you did in that first ball of a piece. You know what I'm saying? When you was checking up all them, all them shots. What, the first? No, the, the second, second one. When you had 62 second. points, yeah. uh, 35 <laughs> rebounds, and 44 assists. Right. <laughs> that game. I had the wild, because the first one that I had, I wasn't, I maybe had like two points. Or yeah, it was like bad. That. It was bad. And I, yeah. It was, um, I kind of learned how to, uh, to, to uh, you know, split my time yeah. from doing event to event. Like the first one, I was, I lost my voice. I was like, it was bad. You know what I mean? So the second game, 
I wanted to show people, you know, why they call me H2O. So I like, I think I had like 15 he, he threes. Did. I went crazy in that game. Like, I just had, and it was and it was in Queens, so I had to show, you know, you know, my people's what was up. So you know. Plus, you knew you was not gonna be able to come back here after a second year in a row stinking it up like yeah. you did in the first one, because yeah. you know was gonna get at you. And the only thing I I didn't let that comment slide earlier about the Knicks beating the Cavs. We ain't, we gonna we gonna get into that right now. Yes, the Knicks did beat the Cavs. You know, but again, and so last, the Nets too. Last yeah, time, the Pacers. Last time the, 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 the Knicks beat the Cavs, and you made this big thing about that, and the Knicks went on to have a horrible season. Yeah, but the thing is, I said I don't care what the Knicks do the rest of the year as long as they yeah. beat the Cavs. The Cavs. And of, and of course, on, on the on the homecoming they, for LeBron, they wound up losing. So, as president of the LeBron James Hate Club, I wanted to make sure <laughs> okay. that when he came home to Cleveland, he lost to the Knicks because it was the home opener for the Cavaliers. Are you too. also the president so, of the Knicks Ring Club? Because I don't think it's, they've had one in in a, in a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's I, been I, what? I, was it now? Uh, is it? Hold on, is it? Is it forty four years now? What is, um, it's yes. Yeah, Quite some time. Yes, man. Let me, all right, let me let me ask let me ask let me ask both of y'all a question because y'all y'all don't y'all don't have kids neither one of y'all right? No, not all that right. no. They, they still so, have so more by the time, than the Cavaliers so organization. So by the time though. they that y'all have grandkids, the Knicks probably still won't have a have a ring, right? Okay, just want to just want to just want to put the, put that out. There. I would okay? hope they could end the drought before then. Before yeah. then, but you know, with, it's, with it's, it's the Knicks. You never know. And exactly, that's that's what it is. But you know what? You never know. It's the okay. Cubs won a World Series two years ago, so you know, well, last year. Last so. season, and that yeah. was that was my Cubs. That's I was I'm a Cubs fan too. So <laughs> I used to tell you guys that. I used to laugh like that. And um, the that's Cubs that's the it. Cubs though. That's baseball. The this Knicks is, this is basketball. The Knicks they are horrible. Could. They got Porzingis, and that's it. So we'll get back to basketball, yeah. but speaking of rings and speaking of World Series, yeah, you know. <laughs> we did have Game 7 last night. The Houston Astros got the victory. Um, L.A. Dodgers brought it to seven games. Uh, I thought the Dodgers were going to win. Obviously, we're rooting for the Dodgers since they have Brooklyn roots as well. Mm -hmm. um, but Houston, they get the W. They, uh, it's their first World Series in franchise history. Um, they beat the Yankees, so that's an extra reason for me not to go for them. But they did, uh, you know, everything that was going on with Houston, with the Hurricanes. Like, you know, sports-wise, they were doing pretty good as far as getting Chris Paul to Rockets. Now their baseball team wins the World Series. Unfortunately, Deshaun Watson went down with an ACL injury, so yeah. it's bad, back to bad things happening for Houston. But last night, um, Hugh Darvish gives up five runs. Uh, Kershaw comes in and try and kind of stops the bleeding, but damage was already done at that point. And then the question began around the you know the uh, the Monday morning quarterbacks as far as Kershaw should have started the game in the first place. What do you th what do you think about that, Eric? I mean, not at all. Kershaw would would have gone on a three days rest, I believe. Yeah. You Darvish was on complete five day rest. It was the right move to make. Um, Kershaw. He hasn't been well lights out. Game, he, yeah, he, he struggled five. in game five, yeah. uh, giving up seven runs. So it wasn't like he was lights out in his previous it, I mean, he was, yeah, the, the one before that he was lights out. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you, yeah. It, no, they a, did the right thing. They traded for you, Darvish. He was on full rest. It was his game. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it, first you, inning struggled because of the, the errors. That really put him behind the eight ball. There you go. Yeah. Nah, I, you know, I agree. It was, it was the, the right move to make. I mean, it's unfortunate for them, you know. I wanted, you know, as I wanted to rep for for the home team for Brooklyn. I still consider them, you know, they from Brooklyn, but you know, it didn't happen. Hats off to to Houston. Congratulations. It's it's, it's good for the city. You know, generate a little more money for the for the city, uh, with them winning. You know, they got the parade coming up. So you know, shout out to them. And hopefully the Yankees come back next year and they'll take it. I I, I kind of I definitely want LA to win from you know going to school in the West Coast and stuff. So um, I was I was going for the Dodgers. Um, you know, the game five was crazy too. The whole series was like, actually yeah, the series. really the good. Yeah. It, it was a, it, series, I mean, they've been beating out uh, football and, and the ratings. Yeah, you know, so the whole series was just amazing. It was it was exciting. It was because you know it wasn't a slow series where it was one nothing games. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were hitting. Both teams were, were hitting throughout the series, so it was, it was pretty yeah. exciting. Do Do you think um, some of the ratings drop is still from you know what what's going on with Colin Kaepernick or or what? Or do you think people football? are like fa football? Yeah. You yeah. think that's fading out? Kind I, th of like. I think it's a, it's a combination of a lot of things with the ratings, but I, it it didn't help that the World Series was, was actually really, really yeah, exciting. Really good, yeah. Like I don't I, I don't think there's been a, a World Series this exciting mm -hmm. in a while. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that didn't help it. But, you know, then, like I said, it's a couple of things. It's, you know, the Kaepernick situation, mm -hmm. the owners, yeah. Trump. You know, I mean, we just had uh, from the Texans, uh, McNair. With his yeah, con even though even though he claimed comments. he was referring to to the league when he said his you know the whole uh, we can't let the inmates run the prison comment he claims mm -hmm. he was talking about the league I know his players didn't feel like that because DeAndre Hopkins walked out of, of the facility and a couple other players um, had some issues with that so if your own team didn't even feel that way about you you know that's a problem and um, you know especially when you're coming off the off of the uh, the Sterling issue mm -hmm. a couple of years ago with the Clippers it's like you know come on man but again he says that he was referring to the league so yeah. I guess we kind of have to give him the benefit of the doubt unless you know some tapes come out yeah, not <laughs> really because I wouldn't even on. see how that analogy would make sense with <laughs> yeah. the league yeah it was a terrible like... analogy and him and Troy Vincent who heads up the Players Association got into it about that yeah so I mean it was it was bad uh, as Trip mentioned it I think it's a combination of everything that's been going on. Uh, with Kaepernick, mm -hmm. with uh, the comments by Trump about the players protesting and kneeling during the anthem, mm -hmm. but also the World Series. I mean, very exciting World Series. They had yeah. two extra inning games. They set the record for most home runs in the World Series with 25. Mm -hmm. So I think it caught people's attention that, as Tripp mentioned, these weren't one nothing games, 2-1 games. These were slugfests between two teams that had a lot of star power. Yeah. Because yeah. I have, you know, like, with baseball, like, I even I know myself personally, I'm one of those, you know, I'm excited when I go to the game, yeah, yeah. but I'm, you know, outside of me watching the Yankees, and I'm not even gonna yeah. say I watch the Yankees all that often in the regular season. Like when they're in the playoffs, I'm yeah, locked, yeah, in. Yeah, locked in. But and I know a lot of fans are like that, where it's like, you know, I'll go to the game and be excited because then you have that just the camaraderie, the energy of being at the stadium. But after that, when we sitting at home, I'm flipping through the channel. Yeah. When yeah, basketball is on, yeah. football is on. You watching that game? It's it's exciting, you know, from from start to finish. But yeah, play, playoff baseball is different. Like it's yeah. you know, it's really exciting. Like you mm -hmm. know, I'm um, I, I'm a Yankee fan and um, I'm a, a Cubs fan as well. But like the playoffs is just a whole nother level. I could watch a whole baseball yeah. playoff game, but like the regular season is so long. Yeah, like, it's, it's like yeah, 160 games. something. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like okay, I, they'll play again. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. So you know, even. I, even in the play of it, like a regular September game, especially like it's like all like you know, w yeah. for a team that doesn't even ma matter, that's not making the playoffs. Like, what's the point, you know? A small percentage of teams make the playoffs too, yeah. and mm -hmm. the seasons are long. The games are long, and you know, I'm I'm with Trip. Unless the Yankees are playing in the playoffs, I didn't even watch the playoffs. I mean, last year you had Cubs and uh, and Cleveland both, you know, with huge droughts and everything. So yeah. you're kind of like, you, you want to see which one of them mm -hmm. wins or whatever. This this year, you know, you have Houston, who never won before, of L.A., and they both had good teams, and it was just, you know, it was an exciting World Series. So it's a, it's a first for me to be watching uh, anything outside of the Yankees, even mm -hmm. even regular playoffs. Like, I'm not really that yeah. interested unless the Yankees yeah. are in yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there were a lot of people, like around mentioned, Game 5, that was a weeknight. People were staying up to one thirty yeah, in the morning crazy, to watch the end of that game because it was so exciting. You know, the, the swings back and forth. Yeah. So I mean, it, I think it caught a lot of people's attention. Hopefully, it brings in the casual fans now. Yeah. A little, little bit more of a revival with baseball, and then uh, on top of it, you also had uh, Houston shortstop uh, Correa after the Game Seven victory proposing to his uh, now fiance, um, who was Miss Texas. USA, which is not too bad for him. So, I guess. Correa, so he just went in all the way around. So, yeah. so his, his girl and Cardi B got a ring? Oh, man. Yeah, these, uh, these guys, crazy. they're making it hard for guys like me out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know. You got to win a World Series well, and propose. Like, what well, happened if he didn't win the World that's, Series? Yeah, that was like, my that passion. Was moment was of all, my life. Yeah, right? It was all, it was all planned. Like, yeah. the, the teammates were on One of the yeah. teammates helped him pick out the ring. Like, what if you yeah, didn't think, win? Yeah. Like After after the final out, he actually ran into the clubhouse to get the ring. Yeah. So yeah. he already had it on hand. Like, he knew he was wow. going to do it. So if he looked at it, because if he lost, he would have been emotional. He would have been tight. He would have been crazy. It wouldn't have happened. He does it on the flight back. They would have Broke Damn, up. Was like, <laughs> by, by the way, I got this. You want to get married or what? Like, so I got a question I mean, for you guys. What's up? What you so want, if Cliff? If you would have lost that game, are you still proposing to him? Yeah. That's what we just was just asking. You I still do it. Okay. Yeah, you I, just I you probably, right there, you probably don't do right it there. on TV though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would have yeah, done it. Would have been private. You take the ring back. Like, oh, we yeah. lost it. Never mind. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Yeah. It's over. That's, that's yeah. all your fault. She was bad luck, so you had to get rid of her. Yeah, get rid of her. It's all your fault. I'm closing the box. All these eight years is over with. Nah, okay. You lost. Good luck, Chum. Sorry. Yeah. So what if you miss Texas? Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Exactly. Come on. Nah, that was dope. 
But now the NFL is definitely going to have to step their game up because, you know, with all those other things, and then on top of that, when you add in the CTE stuff, you know, it's, it's going to get rough, you know. And then now, you know, the owners, you know, they, they with the players and then the owners with Goodell now, you know, Jerry Jones out here, he got he's trying to rally up the owners to, to block Goodell from getting his extension, which is, you know, which is also crazy, even <laughs> though, you know, Jerry has his little ulterior motives of why he's trying to do it. I understand because the whole situation with Ezekiel uh, Elliott, you know. But that's Jerry for you. That's the cowgirls. That's how they. That's how they do, man. You know. So what are you gonna do? He, you know, he, he'll nail with the players one day, and then right and then, after that. Yeah, I, I, I never. I didn't get that. I don't know how you nail, and then like if anybody nails or not, like yeah, you're, that's, like, you can't that's, play. That's, your that's system. Jerry World. Yeah. Like what is what Every, was that? Everything about it. Just didn't was make any weird. Sense. Yeah, we like you nailed one. before the national anthem, and then like so not during, right? Yeah. So then after, I guess everyone stands up, but then like you penalize anybody for wanting to, you know, put up a fist or whatever. And I, I, I honestly feel this whole thing has just gotten like completely out of control from what it, it, it the, the message was. Callan Kaepernick was not fighting for you know, the, 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 the rights of, you know, of the flag. Like, you know, it had nothing to yeah, do with the flag. It like, you know what I mean? It was the just flag. the rights of, you know, human rights, you know, and, and yeah. equal rights, you it, know. It for completely black. got off track after yeah. Trump's comments. Yeah, and, and then and you it, had players nailing to almost as a, like, uh, defiance to Trump when mm -hmm. that's not that's what the message was about. Uh, yeah, the actual, you know, I think Trump did that just to throw place. people off from everything I that is really like, you know what I mean? But he's an idiot. You know, oh, I mean, he's know he's this he's, he's an <laughs> I think idiot. We all know that. Like, I, I if you're we, president, we, why we are you tweeting anyway? Trump I don't... did the NFL a favor by by actually yeah. calling you know the players SOBs because that week uh, was when the CTE study came out that 99 uh -huh. out of 100 yeah. brains that they studied the former players had CTE. And Aaron Hernandez, they and said Aaron that Hernandez early had the most severe case. Aaron you know, Hernandez so, was what 27 so, when he passed. Yeah, and his brain was that of a, a late 50, early 60 year old man. So. so he did them a favor. We haven't even spoken about yeah, that. Nobody that, spoken that about, about Aaron Hernandez. That has completely since this whole gone thing swept under the rug started. because of Trump's tweets and then the NFL's response. So yeah. he did them a favor. So maybe Goodell slipped him a little envelope at dinner one night. <laughs> it was like we just need you to fall on the sword. I mean, the here. media always comes up with something, whether it's sports related or whatever, to kind of you know yeah. go to the right of uh, you know you know don't look here, look there. Yeah. You know, like you know, the Kardashians are doing this or this is going on, like. <laughs> Don't pay attention to, you know, other things or whatever. So I'm glad Statman, Statman just threw us an alley on that too, because your man Tristan Thompson's out now. Oh yeah. So is that that Kardashian curse That's again? The yeah. curse of the Kardashian. It's bad, yeah. bro. Listen, it right? It's real bad. Like it's, Lamar's it's trying to get rough. his life together. From, from no, he was just in the strip club the other day, though. But so he's still, he's still trying to get little... it back, though. He's still trying to get it back. Chris he got Humphrey, a little, he got a little, yeah. love. I don't Chris Humphrey know, better say nobody. Reggie Bush career just fell off a cliff after. Yeah. Listen, I can't, I can't call it on that one, but I mean, there's, you know, there's just so much going on, and this is, and, and I want to kind of transition into um, the the cast and, and the crew of NL4 because there's a, a lot of issues that they tackle in this uh, in this film, um, as far as you know, different you know human, human rights issues. One of the things that I want to highlight, you know, I, I don't know if I could, I'm above the spot yet, and you know, and end, but um, there's a there's a scene in the movie. Um, with the stars of the movie, they, you know, they're, they're leaving the Barclays Center actually, and um, they're all wearing hoodies. And there's a, a white guy in the uh, in the bank. He's taking out money, and um, automatically he just goes into defense mode and assumes that these three black guys in hoodies are trying to rob him. And can I can I say can I? <laughs> It's too much. It's too much. I saw y'all get no, right now. Give everything. But yeah, I'm gonna give y'all everything right now. It's too much. But we're gonna we're gonna play y'all a clip from the movie, and then when we come back, we're gonna bring them on the set. Okay. So whenever you guys are ready, just uh, just let the let the clip go. Who could have stretched the sports for another ten minutes? It was too long. Huh? It was too long. No, I said we stretched the sports for yeah, a little longer. Yeah. Ah! Ah! 
back. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't give y'all a little bit extra. You got a little extra movie right there. Um, really quick though, before before I introduce the guys, um, I gotta take a quick second. We gotta shout out Ladybug. She's not here this week, but if y'all follow on her story on Instagram, she's with her dad. She's with Papa Bug right now. He's reco in recovery mode. So you know, shout out to you. Get well soon. Shout out to Ladybug. She'll be back with us in a couple of weeks. And um, with that being said, we got the cast and the crew. We're going to rotate because there's a lot of guys here. So we're going to rotate and get you guys in and out so everybody can get some time up here. Um, but we're going to start over here with the director. Just introduce yourselves, and then we'll go back over to the side, and then we'll go from there. All right. I don't know if they'll be able to hear me because I don't have a mic. No, yeah, yeah. no, it's right here. It's right here. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. All right. We're just going we're, we're gonna to rock and roll for a second. Let's get, get this mic up, and then we'll be good. Um, I'm Saquon Jones. I'm the writer and director of In There With Four. Uh, I'm Shadnai Freen. I play Thrill and Joel in the movie. My name is Rashad Bashir, and I play Shift. In the movie. Now, I, I had the pleasure. They, they invited me out to a, to a private screen of the movie. That's why I couldn't give too much, even though I might have gave y'all a little too much. <laughs> a little too I much. I got a little excited. Oh, I got a little excited, man. you know. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, listen, when, whenever whenever we have people on, on the show, you know, that's that's family, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you guys will meet Lee in a second, who's also in the movie. That's family. So, you know, I always get excited when it's the fam, so I want to show, you know, extra love. And whatnot, you know, but um, but I, I thought that the movie was great. I mentioned earlier, you know, that you guys tackled a lot of different issues uh, in the film, and I want to. So I want to start over here as the as the as the writer. First of all, you know, it's it's a movie, you know, about with black superheroes in mm -hmm. itself, which is all you know. That's all also kind of crazy. But where did the the concept come from? Um, it just it came. Uh, I'm a comic book fanatic. All I do is read comic books, and I just got sick and tired of sort of waiting for, you know, African-American superheroes, or just superheroes that I could relate to. Um, and I just said, you know what, I decided to write a script where, you know, there's no need to wait anymore. Um, the video equipment and everything else is, is, is cheap enough for us to create our own stories and our own imagery. And what better way to show uh, different aspects of that than to create us in, in a different light. So... I wanted to make sure that I was able to do that. Okay. Could you tell us about the different characters? Thrill is uh, Thrill would be the Superman of the universe. Um, just all powerful, uh, very smart, very cunning. A uh, scholar who is by Damian Damian Lee. Uh, he he's a superhero who is Christian based, but he has conflicts because how can he believe in God and have powers of a God? Um, and we have Shift, who is Rashad Bashir. Um, he plays a man who can change into different character, different people. Um, there's a ton of fight scenes where he changes into people and to, uh, and do everything else. And then we have my son, who we um, who we you, you were a little too earlier in the show. He plays a character named Militant, and he only saves black and brown people. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure I wrote something that he can you know sort of encompass. Um, and bring to it. Not that he wouldn't save white people. I don't want Mike to think that. <laughs> but something that he can relate to. And Lee was an awesome producer. Um, without him, you know, this flick wouldn't been able to been, you know, produced and made. So I, I'm very grateful to to his input and how he was able to, you know, bring bring this movie to light. All right. And then as now, all right. You had to, and, and you know, you was, you was kind of a playboy too. Yeah, you had, lot, you, yeah. Had lot, you had a lot of issues in in the movie. Of course, of course. all right. But yeah. uh, but but for you, when, when uh, joining the project, is, is yeah. this is this your first film or? No, this is actually the fourth project I've done with Saquon. Yeah, okay. we actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't mean to cut him off, but we actually have <laughs> Love Isn't Enough. It's playing. It's spotlighted. Yeah, uh, this month on on uh, Brick. So okay. make sure you guys tune in. Yeah, sorry about that. You guys that. actually, yeah. and you guys also shot a little of and there were four. Um, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as, mm -hmm. as yep. well. See, so yeah. you know, you see how everything coming full circle, <laughs> you know. But um, but but yeah. So for you getting into 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 this character, because I don't know, did you have the basis? Did you base it on your real life character? No, no, no. No, he, uh, you know, Sage uh, created this character. You know, it was, it was a dual role, so you know, it was a lot of work and it was challenging. It was, it was obviously it was fun playing Thrill because he's a bad, you know, he's yeah. badass. He's you know, flying and fighting people, and I did all my own stunts, so I'm proud of that too. Yeah. Um, but it it was fun, you know. He, you know, the challenge is, you know, trying to make each character different. You know, like thrills, like as you said before, it's cunning, he's powerful, smart. Joel, on the other hand, he's just, you know, he's just enjoying the celebrity life. You know, yeah. he's 
he got his girl and, you know, he just has issues with his girl. So, you know, he's just trying to figure it out on the other, other side. You definitely did a good job uh, portraying both characters. I know you, you said you did your own stunts, which I think is funny because I was actually telling Lee after the screening I was uh, about the fights and I was yeah. like, the, the scene with... Uh, with you fighting the big dude, yeah. I was like, oh, "That's a dope scene." But now that you did it, I know you did it yourself. Yeah. Did you actually? Did you get hurt doing that? Um, yeah. we we yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta understand because uh, that character, uh, well, the actor that played him, Kurt, he you know his his, his character is Stallion, and while we were filming, he has these unbelievably iron shit like uh, these forearms that he yeah. has, and you know during the fight scene, I needed like arm pads because like we were going. Going at it, and that you know, it was painful. Like he has, like I don't know what his forearms is just made of iron or something, literally. But um, yeah, I mean we we endured it, you know. So it was it was it was fun. He had to fight uh, Raheem Brock too. Yeah, the, yeah. He's played with football the football player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Colts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, defensive end from the, from the wait. He he was in the movie. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. didn't. Oh, okay, wow. That's, that's, that's a surprise <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you, you had to had to fight a couple of. Brothers. Yeah, I had a lot of fights, <laughs> but it, it was fun, man. You know, something like that. You you dream for a role like mm -hmm. that, you know. And props to Saquon for creating, you know, a character that's like fighting and a superhero, and then you know, on the other side, you know, he's just like as Joel, he's just like a regular everyday dude, you know. Yeah. So it was fun. And then on this side, how was it for you playing a superhero? Because that's different. We don't. That's you know. That's well, not the regular roles. Well, when Saquon came to me, because I'm a I'm a uh, I'm a comic book buff myself. Mm -hmm. So when he came to me uh, with the idea, like when I like when he first came to me, he was doing a comedy open mic in Harlem that I host, and he was terrible. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, so just me, gonna put all the business out there. Yeah. So he came to me. He said, "Rashad, I'm shooting a movie. Uh, it's about black superheroes." I said, "I'm in." I was like, "I'm in." We uh, he had me read uh, some of the part, and I just immediately just dove into it. And for this character shift, he's a, he's a loner. He's a shapeshifter. He's by himself a lot. So I had to really think about as far as a person being a loner and being separate from the group. I was always separate from the group growing up. Mm. Like people always like, you know, pushing like Rashad, nah, you too, you too this, you too that. So I immediately like grabbed onto the character when he when he told me who it, what it was about. Yo, Rashad, like when I met Rashad, it was so crazy because like I just wanted, I just the actor who I didn't really want the actor who was supposed to play him. Yeah. And Rashad was like, I do. I said, did you act? And he's like, yeah. Then I was like, well, some fight scenes. So the dude starts doing like karate moves. Well, like right. he starts okay. like he, <laughs> yo. So he, he's showing me. So he's showing me that he can fight. Okay. Yo, see this move. <laughs> Oh, now nah, you gotta do it, son. Like you gotta do it. No, we gotta see the move. You gotta do something. You gotta show the clip. Like, yeah. You don't blow up his. Rashad did. Rashad did all of his stunts too. We gotta see yeah. this. We gotta well, see it. Well, the thing is, I'm have... gonna pull a hamstring. <laughs> 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 a hamstring. I look like a hamstring. <laughs> but so, it was so crazy because he, like, to to get a comic buff, to get somebody who could do martial arts, to get somebody who could act, like. It's a lot. It was crazy that he was like there. It was it like was, Jesus. The whole thing was fun. As yeah. Because well. I have, um, I, my background is Taekwondo. I did okay. for seven years. So I stopped like just before black, just before black belt. But I never, like I, I worked out and I practiced a little. And then it was just like perfect timing mm. that he's like, I have this role for this character. This is his, this is what his, uh, this is what his uh, demeanor is. And I said, let's do it. So did you do your own stunts as well? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you yeah. you guys had a crazy, crazy scene. fight yeah. scene. Yeah. Yeah. And then you and, and, and you turned into to, yeah. to yeah. him yeah. while yeah. fighting that yeah. little mirror match. Yeah. Big light skin dude. Big dude. Yeah. Yo, everybody in this movie did their own stunts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like a lot of people channel. are not going to realize that when we see the warehouse scene. That uh, Justin, who's played by Nathaniel Ryan, okay. he's a goon in the warehouse scene, and I've I've met him because a Taekwondo shop opened up like right across the street from my house, okay. and found out he can act and he does Taekwondo. Uh, Damien was a former Golden Gloves boxer. Um, Lee even put on a 
uh, a goon spoon and, and, <laughs> and took a couple yeah. bumps. Like yeah. every person Everybody. in this movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, we couldn't go full fledged Batman versus Superman. You, did yeah. too, you too, man. You took a couple of slams. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you dressed up as a goon too. I took, I took all of the bumps. Take, I got took a lot of slams. Yeah. So, this was yeah. this. I, I'm proud of this because it was, you know, African American males who we just did things that, you know, are just, we're not given the opportunity to do mm -hmm. yeah, in Hollywood. Different. Yeah. Right. That's dope. That's real dope, man. So, um, all right, because now everything everything is done with the film. You guys saw the screening, but what's uh, what's going on with the film uh, right now? We submitted it to film festivals, and we're just waiting to hear back. And um, once we do a film festival run, uh, it'll be out at the end of next year. Okay. Um, the, like I said, the, the movie that Shatner, Love Isn't Enough, which is being screened right now on BCAT, mm -hmm. uh, that made it to like seven film festivals. Yeah. Okay. And um, it did really well, so we're looking to sort of piggyback off the success of that movie with this one, which I think is at least a hundred times better than Love Isn't Enough. It's which very, is very original, yeah. original concept, mm -hmm. high concept, a lot of action, which is yeah. winning, you know, Hollywood right now, Marvel, DC. So why yeah. not us? Yeah, why not black superheroes? Yeah, why not, you know, get in the street and, you know, Saquon choreographed a lot of these fight scenes. No, not know? a lot of them. No, all no. of them, bro. Like, <laughs> all right, I mean, he, he choreographed yeah. them. You know? And, I, and, and that was another thing, too, you know, because, like, there was a lot of work that went into this film. Like, yeah. so much work, months, and, yeah. and just, you know, you know, Lee came in, came in and, and helped out tremendously just finishing out and, and, and in post. Like, it was so much work. Like, we know this film is gonna do some. Yeah. How, with the, how long did it take for you guys to do the first uh, fight scene? Cause that was a huge. Uh, that was we fight we scene. started at like yeah. We only had the warehouse for a day, so, so we got all of that. We started at like ten, and we didn't leave till like two in the morning. Yeah, so um, that was like it was like a what sixteen day. hour day. Yeah, yeah. That was, and people were getting frustrated and all this other stuff. Like it was it was great to just. To get that the way yeah. it was, it was a great. It was it was great. tough, yeah. man. It was that was that was the toughest scene that we had to do. Now where, cause all right, cause you guys had the the storyline with as far as um, the characters in the movie, not the the the, the outside, but mm. as the superheroes, the storyline with the, the with the twins and everything, and you guys went back into history. So yeah, where where did that come from with the you know with the with the twins and every and everybody like. My, it's, it's based on a lot of characters in our history, but yeah. the story is because I was like, you know what? It's some of that stuff, like if you if you actually thought about it, it could actually be true mm -hmm. if you think about it. Because at that you know at that time, like uh, I, it was with the um, with the birth of uh, Nat Turner, Nat Turner and other. I'm like, you know, yeah. who who could really say honestly yeah, right. if that was the case? They could have been born seven years, Part and they that. just you know. Well, just... my undergrad was history and political science, so uh, you know I just read all things history. Um, you know, as far as history is concerned, it's it's very easy that in a hundred years a person like Donald Trump could be, you know, made to look magnificent. Yeah. You know what I mean? With the right writer and the right set of books <laughs> and the and, and everybody dead <laughs> to not yeah. say the story. So history, I wanted to make sure that we wrote, you know, uh, a story that um, sort of has everybody questioning history. Mm -hmm. Because not to say that this hasn't happened, but if we don't question it. Then we, we have instances where, where Robert E. Lee statues can be up and high schools can be named after, you know, Confederate Army, you know, yeah. generals um, who sort of sensationalize history. So I wanted people to think, like, how easy it is yeah. for us to, you know, think that, you know, this figure who was, a, who was terrible by all sense, stretches of the imagination can now look be looked and made to, to think uh as positive yeah and you got you guys did a great job and i want to actually um because i mentioned you know you guys have a lot of you know human rights issues in, in there but there's a lot of stuff you know we spoke about earlier that's been going on in professional sports now so i just kind of want to get you guys take on 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 everything that's been going on with the nfl right now mm -hmm. so you got one yeah. whoever wants whichever one y'all want to start I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. I go all day on that. Uh, uh, yeah. Honestly, it's it, at the end of the day with the whole Colin Kaepernick situation. He's they they're making it bigger than you know what it 
what it really is. I mean, he's 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 basically taking the power that he has as a as yeah. a public athlete, as as that kind of figure people look up to him. And he's taking that and he said, I have to do something for me. I do every I do everything for everybody else. It's time to, for me to stand up for what I believe in and also for the people that also follow me as well as far as as far as black people. Now, uh, the whole thing where they said, he, you know, he didn't vote and all of that, I'm like, yeah, it, that causes some type of controversy yeah. among the people that you're, that you're supposed to be standing up for when you, when you protest and then you say, I didn't do this. And then people looking at you like, what? Yeah. But I actually think that that's, although, like, you know, Kaepernick is a frat brother of mine, so there's a difference. So we both oh. cap is. You should have so, started that, man. You should have started that. But I'm going to just say, even though I, I ran for office for city council and I'm very politically active in the community with mentoring, you know, young black men and all the other things, um, it actually is a positive that he didn't vote because now he realized what his choice, the consequence of his choice. So you had a whole bunch of, and I speak to, I'm fully immersed in boycotting the NFL. I haven't watched a snap. I play college football. I play semi-pro ball. I coach little kids. I am as fanatical as about football as you could possibly be fantasy football. And I have not watched a snap. I don't even mess with black men who don't even watch football, who watch football right now, hmm. unless it's a part of their job. Because I think that if you're watching football as a black man, then you don't see yourself in the future. And if you're watching it as a black father, this is something where as a father myself, my, my son is a senior at Auburn University where he's a black kid and they're like, oh, does your son play football? No, he's in the engineering, he's in the school of engineering. Mm -hmm. So it's just the, the idea that a black man could watch football and not even engage in boycotting with his son or his daughter just as a practice to say, in 2017, remember we didn't watch a game at all together and they have that camaraderie, they have something that they have in common. For a black man to watch football right now, I wrote a I wrote an article about it. I'm I'm disgusted by those men. Because you're not looking at yourself uh in the future because if you was, you would know what the ramifications of police brutality are. You would know the social issues connected with watching football and you don't see yourself contributing economically because if you did then you would know that the money is where the, the television shows are. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but anybody who watches football, it's a very minimum until Cap gets a job. Knowing they had, they had Jay Cutler get a job, bro. Jay Cutler. <laughs> Brandon Wheaton? Like, I remember <laughs> Brandon Wheaton when he was at Oklahoma State. Like, he I mean, got a job? Like, they giving away jobs and they saying no to this man. And, and, and then when I, you hear people say about his production not being up to par, like, I, I'm a fantasy football yeah, fanatic. The last six, the last seven weeks of last year, he was a top four fantasy football quarterback. He has 16, he has 16 touchdowns, four interceptions. Four interceptions. Yep. They, were, they were down every single game. Yeah, and statistically yeah. speaking, my NBA is in finance, so statistically speaking, if you are down as much as they were every game last year, you are always throwing the ball. Your higher probability of throwing interceptions is there, and he only had four. Yeah. And then came out with over 500 yards rushing, with like four touchdowns rushing. The game he played against Miami was crazy. Like, so... When you hear how people discredit this man and his statistics, what he's been able to do in this league since he got here, and say that he doesn't have a job, and if you as a black man can disregard all of that and still watch football, you're not the type of person that I would tell where the Underground Railroad route is at. Because <laughs> you, you're going to tell where that route is. So that's, that's my thought about it. I'll stop talking from there. There have been whispers that Kaepernick is supposedly within is days. within 10 days. Yeah. He's supposed to be getting signed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, well, we got to we gotta wait know, and see. Deshaun Watson just oh, went down. Yeah. yeah. They had a report oh, yeah. that he was going to bring in, that, um, that, that uh, McNair was going to bring him in on the practice squad. But that's an insult. Like, First of all, like, I don't know if I want to go to the Texans right now. We just spoke about McNair and his comments earlier. So right. I don't know. And I don't you know, Texas. Yeah, I don't know if we want to like go to that. Texas <laughs> anyway, you know. And, I, you know, this, I mean, there's several teams right now. I mean, I, I would say, honestly, you know, if you look at Green Bay, 
where Aaron Rodgers just went down, and they're a, a team that can make it to the playoffs, and he actually could help them out. Um, Denver, you know, another team. I'm a Broncos team. fan, so yeah. I'm, he could, he like, could definitely I, I'm sick of out. reading about us losing, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and, they, and their quarterbacks are horrible. I mean, they're yeah. healthy and horrible, you know. I, I, would, I would throw Arizona in there, but we know how the fans reacted when they kneeled before the game, so I don't know if <laughs> that would be the right environment for Kaepernick. But uh, we, we got to wait and see how that goes. Like I said, we got 10 days. So, you know, we, if if he, if he gets signed, you know, we'll, we'll let you guys know. Or you guys will know. I mean, it, it'll be the biggest thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sports for that day. Yeah, if, yeah. That, if, that, if that does happen. So we, we'll, we'll let you guys yeah. know. One, 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 yeah, the, I was going to say one thing about the movie. I'll, um. I want to know, like, where do you guys see it going? Like, after the film festival, mm -hmm. like, where, where, like, the sky the limit? Do you want to see question. it on, like, the big, big, big screens or like? Yeah, I mean, we we got like, I'm so confident that, mm -hmm. like, we'll get into every film festival mm -hmm. that we apply to that I can be like, if we don't get it, I can be like, they were racist. That's yeah. why. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just kidding. I really want to see like, like we uh, are we that. like it's we'll 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 do a film because I mean when you're independent. You know, that's the way to go is that film festival route. I mean, I wish it wasn't like that, but it's basically we are, you know, trying to get record deals, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would want to do a private screening with them, too, and have that. Well, we have one, yeah. We have one. one. No, I would, I would want to yeah. do another one, Balling yeah. for Peace one, and have you mm -hmm. guys come and do that. Oh, I think yeah. that would be dope. I'll like, give you my information, and right. we'll go from yeah. there. Yep. Teamwork yeah. makes the dream yeah, work. Man. We out here. Yeah. Step my guy. I was going to say there's definitely teams that could use him for a push, like you said, Steelers, Broncos, whatever. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, we went over this before. He turned down a $14 million a year uh, from San Francisco because he thought he was worth more than that. No, so, he didn't you know. turn. He actually didn't turn it down. Um, John Lynch, who was a former Broncos safety, who is now the GM of the San Francisco 49ers, confirmed that he was not going to be re-signed going into this year. But he had a player yeah, option. Yeah, he had a player he, option. No, he, he, they, wasn't gonna, they weren't going to pick up the player option, though. I mean, he had a player, a player option, option, but he... option, it's yeah, his option. No, but they weren't going... But that, not for the not for the next year, though. He no, felt, for the... Well, this current this year. This current year. This season, he would have... No, season, he, at the he, end he, of the season, he opted out. He opted out. Yeah. But he opted... Yes, he did. You're right. But he was... They, no, but you could still... You, you could still... Your, your contract in the NFL isn't guaranteed. So even if no, you have a player you, option, well, you, have, you, can still, you, you, you can have still... You have a team option, you have a player yeah, option. It was yeah. His yeah. contract it was structured as a player option, no. and he opted out to test free agency. They were going to cut him anyway. So you, you can have... In the NFL... Oh, he, 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 would in still, the NFL, he would still get paid, but they would cut him. Exactly. Cut so that's, so that's, that's like what it did. That, with, that's like, what we have to be clear at. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, whatever. But like, that's what we have to be clear out. So you can have a player option. Well, he still the money, like... Yeah, but but that that. I mean, I don't think that's why I don't think it's about the money though. Yeah, it wasn't about the money. Got the money and played somewhere else though too, but you know. But I'm just saying to you, like we have to be clear when you say the player option is not the same as a player option in say the NBA, guaranteed as it is in the NFL. So he can pick up the option and they still cut him, um, and he get paid. But they but John Lynch confirmed that despite him, you know, opting out of his last year for the player option, that they were going to cut him. And he figured he would he he do it himself because he can test the free agent a, agent market. Go. There you go, John. Let's confirm it. I don't know, man. We got listen. This this thing is gonna get gonna get bigger before we see what up. But we got ten days. Well, hopefully <laughs> ten days. And Kaepernick will 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 have a deal. He'll be signed somewhere, and then we can maybe slow things down with you know whatever there's well, he that's probably going won't on. play right away unless you know it will probably be a few weeks to get into the system because the 49ers yeah the 49ers they traded for Garoppolo and they're saying he might not play this season I understand tanking but if you're going to trade a second round pick for yeah. a guy a high right second round pick at that he's a he's a free agent next year yeah so I don't so, know that even make sense do you want to keep his his free agent value down by not showing how good he could be? Yeah, or that, I'm, that I'm not sure what's going on with that. That but. one didn't make sense, but again, you know, we gotta we gotta wait and see. But we, I, I do want to bring bring the other guys up on the set. So, uh, Cliff, really quick, and for everybody at home, just make sure you guys are following us on the, on the web. If you could pull up the, the website, Cliff, while we and we'll be able to swap everybody out. Um, make sure you're following us, realfansrealtalk.com, facebook.com. Um, forward slash real fans real talk twitter instagram at real fan talk and if you guys do have fan mail questions it's fan mail at real fans real talk dot com and subscribe to that youtube channel because everything is going to go up on the youtube channel once uh we get off the the lives uh
stream. So what's up? All right, but we got a we got a whole lot that's that's going on, and uh, while while we are while we are switching up the set right now, make sure that you guys it's for balling for peace. We need that. It's going down. Tuesday, November se November seventh. Tuesday, it's going down in Times Square. That's on two 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 West Forty Fourth Street. It's going to be from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Make sure you check it out. Uh, look at uh, Bullen 4 Piece, the number four, on social media, Twitter, and Instagram to get your tickets. And if you tweet us, at Real Fan Talk, you get a chance to get two free tickets to the event. You could uh, either tweet to us or tag us on Instagram or post a photo, tell us that you want the tickets. And uh, we'll select one of make the a, make videos. Make a good, a good date tweets. night. You got two tickets right here. You can take <laughs> your boo. You can take your main chick, your side chick, whoever you want to take. Or that your main <laughs> man or your side man. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to do. But Don't definitely, boat, exactly. Oh, nice, come out, man. Y'all got to, you got to come out and support because, you know, once again, you know, Haran is working with our youth, mm -hmm. and y'all know anybody that's out here supporting our youth and doing something positive in our community, we are going to support that. That's why we come out to every event that Haran does, and yeah. we love the bowling because the bowling is, you know, it's fun. It's cozy because it's at the lanes, you know, so it's, it's definitely yeah, a lot of fun. So if you got a game, come out and bowl. And if you if you don't got no game, come out, have some fun. It's for the kids, man. It's for it's for our future. So we got to we got to come out and support that, guys. And um That was nice, man. I mean, you know how I do, man. I saw this, you know, every once in a while. Man, you, you sound know. like a superstar, man. <laughs> but uh, on, on this side over here, introduce yourself. Um Damian Lee. I play the role of Scott. Okay. And I'm Elliot Lee co art and I'm the producer. And also actor in, actor in the film. In, we well, did. I make a little cameo. You exactly. Know? <laughs> I wasn't trying to take no money out of nobody else's pocket, but, you know, we had, we had a budget. <laughs> you did. Listen, you did. You, you had to see the funny scene. It was actually funny, his scene, when, uh, when they were recording, which is actually his scene was yeah. here, was here at Brick. So, you know, and then you had, you know, had, the, had the little cute flavor with you. Nah, me. Giving, bringing the water bottle up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, but uh, let me start over here, because you, you had the, you had the, the, the psychic uh, yeah, abilities, yeah, yeah. telekinesis. And, yeah, yeah, in the film, it. but then you also w w were religious right. at the same at the same time. So right. just tell us a little bit about 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 your character. Well, my character Skyler, he is you know from the city, and um, when he came to me about the role, we we had this whole kind of debate of how we should play him because he saw it one way because his vision was. Um, he was, we, we talk about this all the time, trying to create a new type of, I guess, archetype for, for African-American males, not the typical, you know, even though it could have that urban flavor, but just kind of cleaning up a bit. So that was like our like whole thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, his direction and then, you know, him allowing me to kind of you know, put my own style to it. Um, and as far as this, this, the character, as far as being religious, I think that now, because we have this whole new age concept that going on, I think that you see a lot of people kind of, kind of going into something different. Even though they might believe in God, um, mm -hmm. they kind of almost look at they struggle with this whole thing because you hear a lot of these the conscious community like I am God. So when he mentioned about um, this person having these powers, trying to believe in God, and then thinking that he has a power of a God. I think that a lot of people today kind of struggle with that yeah. whole concept of like, am I God or is it something outside of me or is it something within me? So I think that's where this character kind of is is that with it, you know? Now, were you were you big in in the superheroes and comic books as well? Um, I was actually big into sports. Like I was a, I was a big sport. As far as comic books, I mean, you know the typical um, Superman, and Superman and Batman. And Batman. And Batman. <laughs> I remember back in the days. <laughs> I remember I had this toy, Sun Man. Sun Man. The black, the black superhero. Like I had one okay, of those. Right. Like my my mom's was uber, like you know, <laughs> fight the power or whatever. So she was like, you know, no no white Santa Claus and no white superhero. So she would buy like black action figures and stuff like that. So I had like the Sun Man um, um, action figure or whatever, Man Dog, is what I call them. So, but yeah, like I wasn't really big into it. So. I mean, I thought so the concept was dope, like when he, he brought it to me. So I was like, yeah, I'd be a part of it. 
Hold on, I do. I have a quick question. Yeah. I want to know because I know you said you, all you guys did just the own stunts. Who was the the worst fighter on the <laughs> on the set? Who like who was the worst? Who was the worst? Yeah, who had was, the worst? Well, I was <laughs> see, in my contract. I didn't have I didn't have to do any of my own stunts. <laughs> so <it was> like, <laughs> now nah, I didn't I didn't have to do any of my own stunts. All right. Like at the beginning, like the like my character. If you see, watch that to be like the fight scene that you show. That's not me. Okay. But later on in the movie, I had to do all my own stunts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I guess with budget yeah. issues and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's like, nah, we can't afford to stop in the You have to get in there and get your butt kicks. <laughs> well, you, know, I mean, you know, Damien like 47 pounds wet, so if he did the warehouse scene, he might, we would have definitely been in the Yeah, that's a great chance after that. Yeah, you know, like, you well, you know, I, mean, I mean, everybody that from I saw was, was good as far as with stunts and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean... And it's not like anybody is real, like, you know, from what I know of, like, you know, stunt school or anything yeah. like that. Uh, so. Yeah, with everybody in the movie was, we had about nine cops in the movie. Okay. So, like, the the guy that, that thrill fights with the dreads, he's a cop in real life. Mm -hmm. um, probably four of the goons in the warehouse were cops. Okay. Um, it just so happened that it was just, like, divine intervention that we were able to get people who knew how to handle themselves. Already. But the thing was, was the, like, when, when, like what Shadden was talking about, is that cops don't know how to really turn it off. So, <laughs> so okay. we're like, yo, we like, like, Kirk, this yeah. is, this is this is Slow down. Slow yeah. down. Yeah. not real. Yeah. 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 this man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, That's not in his contract. Yeah. That's not in his contract. Like, all of the cops would get these 500-yard stands. Yeah. Like, like, they get in the mean? zone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, now, how, how is it with insurance, though? For the movie. No, we ain't. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Sure it's it's like, you know what? No <laughs> comment. Like, like, because, like, I know, like, you know, like. So, how's the show ratings going? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. How's your mother doing? Like, how's she doing? Because, like, with, Thanksgiving? with Jackie Chan, you know, like, he can't get insured. Because he uh, does all of his, I mean, his stunts is a little crazier, though. But, yeah. you know, so I, I just I, I just wonder, you know what I mean? Like, is is it harder to... No, we, for in this situation, we didn't have insurance. Uh, for, oh, so yeah, you listen. Know, like, yeah, we but no, was hoping to find it. Yeah, yeah, insurance. No, 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 no. Nobody no. Get we hurt. had insurance. We had insurance. Um, but if you were an actor who did not have insurance, uh -huh. you were taken out of the scene. Oh, okay, and I got you, I got you. somebody okay. who had insurance... Would go in the scene, in I got you. Do. So we went, we did a great job of okay. mixing and matching, you know, individuals who had regular job insurance. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Or Obamacare. To take out the struggling I got artist, you. the struggling actor who, who, does it? Okay. who doesn't have any insurance. So not to say sense. that Damien doesn't have any insurance. Yeah, he I got just, you. You know, he ain't want to do a stunt. I do anything else. I ain't doing a stunt, dog. I ain't getting beat down. Yeah, so everybody who did any, any hard, like, so in, in the scenes we took really bad bumps, that was all me. Like I took all of the body slams and the kicks to the face. Wow. And and then it's but your it's, project. Yeah. 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 That's 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 sacrifice all your art right there to the fullest. But you know, but that that says to something else. Like m our goal is to create better cinema for African Americans. Mm -hmm. So right now I feel like we're not doing our job because we're not thinking like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so our stories are all drug dealers and relationships mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Or is, and if we can get a creative portion to say that, you know, okay, let's do some fight scenes. We, we rarely see African-American fight scenes outside of big budget yeah. movies. You know what I mean? Our independent movies are all yeah. based off of, Gun, of yeah. guns. And, like, even when I said to Moonlight, I said, um, I had a discussion with a couple of white co-workers, and I said, does Moonlight have to... Everybody in Moonlight did not have to do that. Janelle Monet could have been a, a nurse... Um, Ali's character, I forgot the guy's name, um, he could have been a doctor mentoring mm -hmm. this young man. You know what I mean? Like, every everything did not have to make black men look bad. Yeah. You know, like, his mother didn't even, if you write it the right way, his mother didn't even have to be on drugs. You know, he she could have had, like, you know, some a gambling issue. You know, or she could have had or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, like, like for well, for that to be the story. That's how. That's how you got. That's how you got to get the awards if you if you. Uh, but that's not. Black, that's but that's. Black, that's I know. That's I know. Bad, I know. I know. It's why bad, does Tyler Perry have to be in the dress listen, in order for us to? Denzel, 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 Denzel didn't get into a training day. Holly Perry, you know, had to go in Monsters Ball to get her, you know, Academy Awards. So I agree, but like when like 
that, and I wanted to sort of, I wanted us to make a movie, mm -hmm. like, so, like, Scarlett, Damien's character, like, I'm from Queens Bitch Projects. Okay. You know, I grew up with Mob Deep. I, rest, I, rest I, Queens Prodigy. Like, I grew up in the projects, but I have an MBA yes. from a nationally ranked business school. I'm a mm. property owner. You know, like, you, you don't have to, you can be hood without showing it and, yeah. and, and, and not having to be able to articulate what you're saying without the N-word and son and you know what I'm saying yeah. all the time. And I think that in that order sense. for us to um, dispel these stereotypes with African-American men specifically, mm -hmm. um, we have to change the imagery. And if you look at China's market right now, um, they're reducing the amount of American content because their their women are more attracted to white men than they are to Asian men. And that's based off of the imagery that they're showing. So they're reducing all of the um, the American movies mm -hmm. because it's all Af it's all Caucasian males, you know, centered. And then they're pouring in more money to create Asian superheroes to change the mindset of the people there. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing that there, why can't we do it here? Why hasn't it been done here? Yes, I mean, superheroes hasn't been done anywhere outside of the U.S. I did, the Russia just came out with their first one, Guardians. Yeah, Guardians, that was yeah. terrible. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. I was so excited <laughs> I for was, that's it. The special think. effects yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, and I'm terrible. like, wow, the writing was horrible. It was bad. Big disappointment. And but we got to close off with the uh, Bowling for Peace. Really quick, uh, though. Let me get, let me get uh, Liam really oh, quick oh, as, oh, the, oh, as a producer oh, of, of the film. Just he edited the film too. So. I, I did. Because you can't, and you yeah. also you came on late to the project. So. I came on late to the project. Um, they were already uh, maybe 50, 75 percent done um, when I came on to the project, and you know it was just a blessing to me, Saquon, and to actually do this. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, and you know thank Real Friends Real Talk for bringing us on. I'm born for peace. I'm going to yeah, be there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show my 200 yeah. skills out on the range. <laughs> <laughs> 200 the better, baby. It's going down. Make sure y'all pull up Balling for Peace yeah, Tuesday, yeah. November 7th. Holla mm. at H2O or hit up at Balling for Peace on Instagram if you guys need the information. Yeah. That's the man right there to talk to. And also, guys, don't forget, November 14th, we are back at it with the Real Fans Real Talk NBA 2K tournament. The first round is going to be November 14th, right up the block from the Barclays Center at Bleachers. And of course, the finals is going to be December 17th, Sunday at the Barclays Center. It's going to be crazy up there. We got a whole lot of people coming out. Don Shea Hopkins is going to be there. Freaky Zeke, and I might have a couple other surprises from Dipset that's going to pull up out in, the, in the building. So make sure you guys get those tickets now and register. If you got games, stop playing and sign up for the tournament. It's $500 on the line. Who can't use $500 Half in this a grand, time? baby. You know, <laughs> free ticket to the game, even if you lose. So it's definitely worth checking. Exactly, out. you still see the game. Make sure you're there, Bowling for Peace, this Tuesday. Check us out, realfansrealtalk.com for Trip Young, Bowling for Peace, and the whole cast and crew of There Were Four. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time, everyone. Face facts, what up, what up? Realfansrealtalk.com The Arthur Diamonds, Trip Young, and Intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. Realfansrealtalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest yeah, I'm talking about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com.